I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I recently came to a new appreciation of just how fun micro quads and uh, micro brushed quads specifically, tiny whoops as many people call them, just how fun they could be. Uh, And one of the things I learned about them in my interview with Jesse Perkins, Mr. Tiny Whoop, is that all of the top mini tiny whoop racing pilots fly in angle mode. They fly in auto level mode. Now, you can go watch that video if you want to hear more about why Jesse thinks that is. But I figured, okay, great. It's time then to pay some attention to auto level modes. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Stay tuned. You've probably heard that if you're learning to fly a mini quad, that you should not waste your time with auto level that angle mode and horizon mode are a crutch, that they teach you bad habits that you then have to unlearn if, if when you eventually, ultimately, inevitably learn just how limited and bad auto level modes are and finally get with the big boys and start flying acro mode. Yeah, you've heard some of those things from me, although not in quite as hyperbolic a way of putting it. And I do think those things are true. If you want to be a, a mini quad racer or especially a freestyle pilot, because freestyle pilots got to go inverted. And even in horizon mode, you can't really stay inverted. If you want to be do those things, then I think those things are still true. But apparently for micro quads and tiny whoops specifically, that's just not true. I interviewed Jesse Perkins recently. He's Mr. Tiny Whoop. And he tells me that all of the top micro mini quad, uh, micro whoop, all the top whoop racers are flying in angle mode, auto level mode. So, okay, maybe there's something to this. And some of you guys are flying your five inch mini quads in auto level mode. Listen, as much as I would say, those things, as much as I would give you that advice, as long as you're flying, I don't care. We're all here to have a good time. It's your quad. You do whatever you want with it, right? I'm not going to look down on your judge. You don't ever be ashamed to fly. However you fly, don't be ashamed. Don't, don't let somebody like me bully you. I hope I didn't do that. I hope you didn't take it that way. So if you're going to fly an auto level mode, the first thing you got to do is you got to trim your accelerometer so that your quadcopter knows which way is level. And that is what we're going to look at in this video. Now, some people, when they first get started, they turn on auto level mode and then the quadcopter takes off and it hovers. Oh, here, I got one right here. Don't have to use my hand. There we go. They take off and the quadcopter hovers basically level. (laughs) And they're surprised, though, that when it doesn't stay in place, that it drifts. And they're like, what's going on? I thought it was an auto level mode. In case you didn't know, Unless you've got something like GPS, unless you've got position hold, which is different from auto level, the quadcopter is not going to stay in place. Auto level means that if you're moving to the side and you release the stick, the quad will mostly level out and it'll mostly drift to a stop. But wind can blow. There can be just random disturbances in the air coming off the props that causes it to drift. So don't don't mistake auto level for position hold. You still have to fly the quad. If you want it to stay in one place, you still have to make small adjustments on the sticks. Auto level just gives you kind of like a safety safety where if you if you get in trouble, you center the stick and it levels out and it, it settles down. But the quadcopter has to know what direction is up, and it doesn't necessarily know that by default. And the way to fix that is to calibrate and trim your accelerometer. Now, calibrating the accelerometer is done in the setup tab in the configurator. It's the very first tab that comes up when you connect. And you're going to place the quad flat on a table so it's basically level with the horizon. And then you're going to click calibrate accelerometer. Calibrating the accelerometer is usually not going to give you a perfectly flat hover when you go and fly. There's usually small inaccuracies like the table may not be perfectly level or the the frame, the, maybe the flight controller isn't perfectly parallel to the ground in the frame or various things. And there can be dynamic things as well that cause the quad to drift. Uh, anyway, the calibration is just the first step. But it is a step that you should do on all of your quads, whether you're going to fly auto level or not, because there's a parameter called small angle in the command line, and it will prevent the quad from arming if the quad is not level. I think the default is 25 degrees, so the quad has to be within plus or minus 25 degrees of the horizon or it'll refuse to arm. 
And the reason for that is that if you're carrying the quad in your hand, you're just hanging down by your side or whatever, and you accidentally bump and your battery's plugged in, which you shouldn't do, <laughs> and you bump the arm switch, which you should have a double switch arming. Anyway, if all those safety precautions fail for some reason, we don't want the quad to arm while you're holding it in your hand. And so if the quad isn't level, there's an additional safety check there. But sm so, so if you have, haven't calibrated your accelerometer, your quad may refuse to arm, even if you're not doing auto level. And it's a good tip if you're in the field and you're trying to arm your quad and it's refusing to arm, you can just try calibrating the accelerometer. Maybe that'll fix it. Even if the accelerometer was working correctly, in a hard crash, sometimes there can be enough of a knock that it gets whacked a little out of calibration and you need to recalibrate it. So this is something that you can know, good to know about even if you're not flying a tiny whoop or not flying in auto level mode. These are the status LEDs on the flight controller. And this is a B-Brain V2 flight controller, but all beta flight, clean flight, flight controllers are going to have status LEDs, something like this. There's typically one that is solid lit up and that indicates power to the board. And then another one that is sometimes blinking and sometimes off, and that is a status indicator. And you can see at this moment, mine is blinking. And that is in this slow blinking like this indicates that something is preventing arming. Something is getting in the way of it. And in this case, what's preventing arming is the miscalibrated accelerometer. The flight controller does not believe that this guy is flat on the ground and small angle is preventing it from arming. Now, one way around that is to plug into USB. You can't see it because of the battery. To plug into USB and to go to the setup tab. But that, as I showed you, is not going to work on this quad because USB gets in the way. And in the field, it's often not going to work because you just don't have a laptop. There's a stick command you can use on your radio that will accomplish the same thing. To calibrate the accelerometer, you're going to go full throttle with the quad disarmed, obviously, you dumb butts. Full throttle. And then yaw left. And then pitch down. So I go full throttle and you can see that when I go full throttle, that light starts flashing again. And that's because when the throttle is up, that also prevents the quad from arming. So full throttle, yaw left, pitch down. Well, I'm a little bit confused here because I'm used to seeing a fast flash. It'll go blink, blink, blink when you do the calibration and that's your indication the calibration has occurred. And I'm not seeing that, but I think the calibration worked. Let's just double check. So I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm going to use the calibration uh, calibration stick command. And now the calibration should be screwed up. When we put it back level, yeah, the light is blinking saying, hey, I don't think I'm right side up. So now I'm going to run it again. It doesn't do the fast blink, but if I now go to zero throttle, we can see, okay, it's good to go. In order to trim the accelerometer, I'm going to find myself a relatively open area like you see here. You don't want to be near a bunch of obstructions. Like I originally tried to record this demo uh, hovering on the bench because I've already got my camera set up there. But there are so many obstructions nearby. The air coming off the props hits the obstructions. The quadcopter is buffeted. It's really impossible to hold a hover. And it's impossible to tell whether the copter is drifting because the accelerometer needs to be trimmed or just because it's too close to an obstruction. So we're going to find a relatively open area and then I'm going to take off and hover. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to hover in place and I'm going to feel which direction I'm having to hold the stick to keep the copter hovering in place. So if I center the stick right now, what you'll see is that the copter drifts to the right and back slightly. So that's another way to do it is just center the stick and look at which direction the copter tends to drift. It's definitely drifting strong to the right. Now, maybe a little back. It's hard to tell. The other way to think about it is which way are you having to hold the stick. So if you find that you're having to kind of push the stick to the left in order to keep the copter hovering in place, it means the copter has, it needs left trim. Okay, so to input the trim, what you're gonna do is you're gonna disarm, you're gonna put the throttle to full, and you're gonna push the stick in the direction that you had to push it to keep the copter in place. So the copter was drifting right, I had to push left to keep it in place. I'm gonna push left just like that one time, and that's gonna input one click of left accelerometer trim. So now I'm gonna rearm, and what I should find is that that tendency to drift to the left and to the right, nope, it's still there, so I'm gonna do it again. Full throttle, one left click, and take off.
Oh, that's better. It's not doing it as much. If I hover and center the stick, oh, just the tiniest bit of drift, but it's almost there. It's almost there. So I'm going to do it one more time. And what I find is that you often can't get it perfect. So if I do one more click of left trim, now we may start drifting to the left instead of the right. There may not be anything you can really do about that. Battery's dead. Oh no, that's really good. Yeah, see, I'm not, my hand isn't even on the stick and it's holding position pretty well. It's still drifting back, but on the left to right axis, it's pretty good. So now, it, since it's drifting back, we're going to put in one click of front pitch and see how it does. Oh, that's pretty good. It's still drifting a little back. Let's see if we can... Oh, darn you. Let's see if we can fix that. One more click of front pitch. Still a little bit of drift back. Oh, dead on. Dead on. Perfect. And you may be interested to know that if you go into the Betaflight configurator and look in the configuration tab at the accelerometer trim section, the results of your trim are right here. That's these numbers. So if you were to like lose your configuration and need to restore it, you could actually put these numbers back in and the quadcopter's trim would go right back where it was. So now you know how to calibrate and trim the accelerometer on your Tiny Whoop or any other quad that you're going to do auto level mode on. Now, for those of you who stuck with me to the end of the video, I have a little Easter egg for you, uh, a bonus for the Whoop pilots or the, uh, the auto level pilots. You guys feel like you get looked down upon sometimes, I think. And so here's a little, here's a little treat just for you. All those pilots who are too good to fly auto level, they tuned out a long time ago. You ever get your quad stuck in a tree? Like your, your, your mini quad. Your, if your whoop gets stuck in a tree, I don't know what you're going to... Why was your whoop up in a tree anyway? Never mind. It's none of my business. You ever get your quad stuck in a tree and you can't get it out? And you can't arm. You want to arm the quad and spin the motors and just try and thrash it out. But you can't arm because it's not right side up and small angle is preventing that. Well, what some of us do is we just go into the CLI and we type set small angle equals 180, enter, save, enter and that just disables small angle protection so the quad will arm at any angle and that's kind of useful like if you're racing and you put the quad on one of those starting blocks that tilts it at 45 degrees oops it won't arm right so you can just turn small angle off and not worry about it and that'll save you if you get caught in a tree as well but what if you didn't do that what you can do is you can use the stick command i showed you earlier in the video throttle up left pitch down and that will recalibrate the accelerometer so that whatever attitude the quad is at in the tree, upside down, left side, right side, now it thinks it's right side up and it will arm. So yeah, you get your quad stuck in a tree, just give that stick command and then it'll arm and you can try and thrash it out. When it lands, when it falls to the ground, you got to redo it. You got to set it level on the ground and recalibrate, but that'll help you get it out of the tree anyway. There's a little tip for you. That's going to do it for this video. Look forward to a, mo a few more Tiny Whoop videos uh, coming up on this channel uh, as I continue to appreciate Tiny Whoops more than I used to. Thanks, you guys. Happy flying.